Find the intervals and radii of convergence for the following power series. So for these two examples, we're going to notch things up a little bit. I'm going to make it so that an x squared comes out when we do the ratio test, and then we'll have to deal with that. This will be useful for later on. Okay, we'll start with f of x equal to sum n going from 1 to infinity, x over 4 raised to the 2n over n. So I apply the ratio test, take the limit, we're going to take this term, wherever I see an n, I put an n plus 1, and then we're going to take this term and flip it over. So the n over n plus 1 comes out of the absolute value sign, n is always going to be positive in this case, and then what do we have? We have x over 4 raised to the 2n plus 2 power over x over 4 raised to the 2n. Note, when we cancel, we'll just be left with a 2 up in top, so it's going to be x over 4 and absolute value squared. So we want to check where this term here is strictly less than 1. So that's what the ratio test says. When that's strictly less than 1, the original series converges. Okay, so we have this thing here. Now note, the regular way we would decode would be to take the 1, put it on the other side as a minus 1, and then you could drop the absolute value signs. We could do that here, but it'll make things a little bit confusing. So let's just take a look at this for a second. Note that x squared is always going to be 0 or a positive number. There's no way I can get a negative number out if I square something. 16 is also positive. So what I'm having here is either 0 or a positive number. No reason to have absolute value signs around that. That thing is already coming in with its absolute value on. So I'll just get rid of it. Now note, I can clean this up. I can move the 16 to the other side, and then I'm going to subtract it over. So we're looking at the inequality, x squared minus 16 is less than 0. So this you probably haven't seen since college algebra or pre-calc. So how do we solve that? Well, you solve it with the equality, find the points where it's equal, and then you're going to check one point in each region, and that'll tell you whether the inequality is being solved or not. So let's take a look. So if I factor this, I get x plus 4 times x minus 4. I'm going to set it equal to 0. So that's going to give me minus 4 and 4. So if we check minus 4 or 4 in the original inequality, we notice we're going to get 16 minus 16 is 0. Is 0 strictly less than 0? No. So although I'm keeping track of those two points, they're not going to be in the interval where the inequality is true. So we'll get open circles for minus 4 and 4. Check a point in each region. 0 is a good one for the middle. If I put 0 in there, I'm going to have minus 16 less than 0. Is that true? Yes. So I'm going to get the whole entire middle region. Let's take one on the outside here. How about if I take 5? If I put 5 into this, we're going to have 25 minus 16, which is 9. Is that less than 0? No. So this region we do not keep. If I take minus 5, we're going to get the same thing. 25 minus 16, which is 9. Is that less than 0? No. So we throw that one away also. So note, to solve the inequality, we're going to wind up getting the interval from minus 4 to 4 without the minus 4 or the 4. Now note, that's just checking against the ratio test. We still have to check the endpoints. Although I check the endpoints here for the inequality, that's not checking them for our original series. So what I'm going to do is we're going to take our 4 and minus 4, put it into the original equation. If I put a 4 in here, that's going to be 1 raised to the 2n, which is always 1. So I'm looking at series for 1 over n, and that's going to diverge. That's a p-series with p equal to 1. If we go with the minus 1, okay, the minus 4, what's going to happen? That's going to give me a minus 1, but we're raising it to 2n. So squaring that thing's going to make it a 1, and then 1 to the n is always 1. So again, we're looking at series for 1 over n, so that'll diverge also. So our interval of convergence is going to be minus 4 to 4. Radius of convergence is going to be 4. Now note in general, when I have squares showing up in my power series, you may not get an interval. You can wind up getting weird things like double intervals. It's going to depend how the thing's set up. So in this case, we're just lucky that an interval came out. Let's try another one f of x equal to 1 minus x squared over 2 factorial plus x to the fourth over 4 factorial and so on. 
So this power series is going to be related to cosine x, and we'll see that in a section or two. Let's take a look. The general term here is going to be a sub n equal to minus 1 to the n, x to the 2n over 2n factorial. So we'll have to figure out how to deal with the 2n factorial. We're going to apply the ratio test as usual. Limit n going to infinity, a n plus 1 over a n. That's going to be limit n going to infinity. Okay, we're going to have x wherever I have an n, I put an n plus 1. So I get x, 2n plus 1, which is going to be 2n plus 2. Then we're looking at 2n plus 1 factorial, which is 2n plus 2 factorial. We take our general term and flip it over. That's going to give me 2n factorial over x to the 2n, and then I can start cleaning up. Okay, here, the x to the 2n plus 2 and the x to the 2n are going to cancel, leaving me with an x squared in absolute value signs. For the factorials, let's recall what factorial means. n factorial means multiply all numbers 1 through n. So 2n factorial is going to mean multiply all numbers 1 through 2n. For 2n plus 2 factorial, same idea. You multiply all numbers from 1 through 2n plus 2. So we're going to go 1 all the way up to 2n. Then I have to add on 2n plus 1 and 2n plus 2. So when we do our cancellation. The only thing that winds up in the bottom is going to be 2n plus 1, 2n plus 2. If I take the limit as n goes to infinity, x squared is just going to be some number when you fix your x. So the bottom is going to drive everything down to 0. When is this less than 1? Okay, That's what the ratio test asks for. You'll get convergence when this gadget here is strictly less than 1. Well, x didn't matter, so this is going to be 0 always. So this is going to converge for all x. So we'll have interval of convergence, all real numbers. Radius of convergence is going to be plus infinity.